How's it going, guys? This is Jason, and welcome back to Magic the Gathering Arena. Today we're going to be doing another standard event, and we're going to be using a deck that I've never used before. And I had to look up what the name of this color combination is. It's a Your uh, Bolus deck. This one's made by JPS17 for a recent competition. Let's give it a look. So some of the staples of the deck are Teferi Time Raveler, Nickel Bolus Dragon God, and Narset Parter of Veils. And essentially, it's a Planeswalker deck uh, with a lot of control cards to support it. So in addition to those Planeswalkers, it's also got Liliana, Dreadhorde General. Uh, it's got a lot of discard for the early game, like Duress, Agonizing Remorse, Thought Erasure. Got some removal, like the Elder Spell, Cry the Carnarium, and Oath of Kea, as well as Elspeth Conquers Death, which can also bring these Planeswalkers back. And then, uh, what else is there? Atris for uh, a creature and card draw. But... Yeah, it seems like the overall strategy is to get all the Planeswalkers out and sort of just dominate the field with the amount of value you get for free per turn once you have these guys all out. There's also a win condition with Elder Spell. If you have enough of these Planeswalkers out, or if your opponent has Planeswalkers out, you can essentially get to Nicol Bolas' ultimate right away and uh, just win the game instantly. So that's a way to win. There's only one Elder Spell, so that's kind of a... It's not exactly the most reliable way to win, but it is kind of fun when you do it. Um... That's just about it. Here's the sideboard, if you're curious. We're going to be doing best of one, so we're not going to be using that, but here it is. And yeah, let's get into it. I was messing around with this deck a little bit before recording this, and uh, I was finding it a little bit difficult to use, to be honest. Especially against aggro. It seems like it's uh, it has difficulty dealing with faster decks that can put out lots of creatures in the early game. So we're going to see if we can potentially overcome that today. I think uh, best of three might be better against those kinds of matchups, just because you can sideboard in more board, uh, more crowd control. All right, good land situation. We've got Thought Erasure in our set. Seems like an okay start. We'll keep it. And now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention: the, the reason this is four color instead of three color is purely the splash of red for Nicol Bolas. Aside from that splash of red, it's basically an Esper deck. Oh. Great, we're against aggro, so this will put us to the test right away. And we may already be too slow, to be honest, because Thought Erasure is coming out turn two. He went first, so... I don't know. I think we need to look for more... Uh... You know what we need? We probably need Oath of Kea to both remove one of his creatures and to gain us life. That's probably the best thing you can have against Mono Red Aggro. And that'd be a better turn 3 pick than either of these guys. Steam Gin, yeah. Sadly, we're going to have to pay life to do Thought Erasure next turn, but I still think it's worth it. If he has something like an Anax, we want to get rid of that. What is he thinking about? There's nothing else he can do this turn except attack, so why not just attack? What's going on? But yeah, if we don't get an Oath of Kea, we'll probably do Teferi and just bounce his Steamkin. We got Nicol Bolas. I don't, I don't know if we're going to survive to turn 5, though. What do we have here? Yeah, there's Anax. He doesn't have another land, though, so it's possible he won't even get to play Anax. But I don't know if I should risk that. He's got these Bone Crushers as well. Light up the stage would also draw him some cards, so maybe I should get rid of that. We're going to hope he doesn't draw a land, and we're going to get rid of Light up the stage. Our set. No. Did he find that mountain? Oh, he did. Shit. So here comes Anax. Well, we can get rid of Anax with Elizabeth Conquer's death if we survive that long. But uh, I guess we need to bounce Anax with Teferi now. That'll also divert some of the damage from our life total, potentially. Oh, another Teferi. We might do the same thing next turn. Until we get to turn 5 with Elspeth Conquer's death. But we're going to be taking a lot of damage in the meantime, which is unfortunate. 
If we're down to the single digits, Elspeth Conqueror's death might not help anymore. Yeah. We're down to 10 right now. Cry the Carnarium. Oh, that would be so nice. Should I bounce Runaway Steamkin and then do Cry the Carnarium to get rid of these two? I can't afford to take four damage for Axe though. Mmm. Right now, it would, only, it would only kill Fervent Champion. I think we're ready to do Teferi. Look for, uh, what am I bouncing? Runaway Steamkin or Anax? If I bounce Steamkin, he can still do five damage. Nine damage with these two Bone Crushers. I'll be just about dead. If I bounce Anax, he can only do... Four plus five. He can, he can do the same amount of damage either way. So let's bounce the thing that he has to pay more mana for. Actually, we'll do this, because then maybe we can get both of those guys with Kari the Carnarium next turn. Agonize Remorse. I don't have enough mana. Yeah. I think uh, I think we're dead. I think he's got, he, he has damage coming in too fast for us to respond. We can only do like one spell per turn. And we don't have, we don't have enough crowd control. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't think he would do Bone Crusher as a creature. Unless he got another land. I assumed he would do Steamkin. Alright, alright. Maybe we do have a chance. Um actually no, I don't think we do. Because even if I Elspeth Conquer's death, one of his three costs, he's still going to do five damage with creatures and then two damage with his Bone Crusher. So I think we're dead. Pretty sure we're dead here. I don't think there's any way we can get around it. Atris can be a blocker. Draws a card. We're still taking... Yeah. No matter what, what we do, we're still taking five damage minimum. Plus the two from Bone Crusher, so we're dead. So I guess we'll just play, uh, I don't know. We'll play Atris, see what we get. But yeah, it's looking like we're dead here. And this is exactly the problem that I mentioned earlier. It's just, even though we had stuff to play most of the time with this deck and this game, um, aggro is just too fast. It's doing too much damage for us to contain with the removal cards that we have at our disposal. <laughs> There's Oath of Kea, finally. If I had this earlier, I might have been able to survive. God, how frustrating. Now it's too late. If this had been in the opening hand, or if we had drawn it before this turn, we would have been able to kill Bone Crusher and gain three life, and we would have been fine. Mm. Yeah, it's game. Okay. So I think that pretty much demonstrates how aggro does against this deck. I'm hoping we don't just fight aggro the entire time. I hope we get some variety. But we shall see. Unfortunately, I feel like the meta is pretty much flooded with uh, mono red aggro for events where you can potentially grind, because it's the most efficient way to grind, and I think magic should do something to de-incentivize that, because it completely ruins the diversity of the meta. Starting uh, land situation looks really good. I like having these early playables as well. We'll keep this. It's going to be another slow start if we're against aggro, but we'll see. They just mulligan twice? If he did, he's not going to appreciate my thought erasure. <laughs> taking, away, taking away another card. Wow, he did. He mulliganed down to five. Yep. Yeah. We're about to see what he's working with. Castle Ardenvale turn one. That does not bode well for him. G. 
you got? Disdainful Stroke, Arboreal Grazer, Growth Spiral. He doesn't have any green, so he can't afford either of these. Let's get rid of Disdainful Stroke, I guess. Nickel Bolus. I do want a Nickel Bolus, but I probably should make sure I have enough mana for Atris. Now nah, we'll keep Nickel Bolus. We have other ways of drawing cards. Before then. Let's do, uh... Let's do Narset, since Growth Spiral is going to draw him a card. I want to keep him from having any kind of advantage like that. That'll help us find stuff as well. Oath of K, I'll take it. Next turn, if we don't get a land, we'll do Teferi. Um, damn, I should have done Teferi first to see if he countered it, because now I don't know if I need Teferi or Elder Spell. We'll take, we'll take the Elder Spell. Does he have a counter? Shit. Should have taken the other Teferi. Oops. So he's banned, but he just has no luck finding the forests he needs. What a shame. Liliana. That's another thing that I want, but I probably need lands. Let me look for some lands. I want to make sure I get Nicol Bolas out really soon. Because uh, he's in a great position right now for Nicol Bolas to come out. Let's do Thought Erasure. Get rid of his Arboreal Grazer, I guess. Interplanar Beacon. Yeah, that'll allow me to cast Nicol Bolas, I believe. Here we go. And now he's pretty much screwed because we're going to be getting rid of one of his permanents or cards in his hand per turn. We're drawing a card per turn. The immortal, the be he's not going to be able to recover from this, I don't think. What did we just get rid of? Let Stern Dismissal. Hmm. There's your green, finally. And Narset doesn't even let you draw a card. He's going to concede soon. I can tell. Yeah. That was a rough one. That was a rough one for him. By the time he drew a, a green card for for mana, it was way too late. Let's see if we can get an actual victory. That one doesn't that one didn't count that much because anybody can get land screwed. It had nothing to do with my deck. Uh this land situation is okay. I'm concerned about having two scry lands that'll be guaranteed to enter tapped. We do have some early playables though. We'll keep it. We'll go for a, uh, probably turn two duress. First two turns, Skylands. Turn three. Ooh, Cry the Carnarium. I like having that against red. Yeah, let's do Temple of Deceit. Yeah, we'll take that land to get to Atris. So, I think we're okay on land situation. We're going to do duress next turn. Turn after that, probably Oath of Kea. To get rid of his, uh, something. Let's see what he's got. Real quick. Ha! Claim the first board. So he's got a Cauldron Familiar and a Woe Strider. Good to know. Another Atris. How important is Atris? I probably want more... I already have one. So I think just based on the fact that I already have one, I don't need another one. We are definitely going to cry the Kernair if he plays all these creatures. I should probably wait until he has Cauldron Familiar out, though, because I want to make sure that gets exiled. Because uh, I don't want him having the possibility of doing the Witch's Oven combo. So we're going to wait on Cry the Carnarium. We'll do... Hmm. Probably Oath of Kea to get rid of Priest of Forgotten Gods. Actually, no, we'll get rid of Ro Woe Strider. And then if he wants to do his sacrifice thing, he can. Uh, but that will get rid of both of his creatures. Actually, no. On second thought, we need to get rid of Priest of Forgotten Gods. Reason for that is I want Woe Strider exiled as well, because he can escape. So I need to wait until Cry the Carnarium gets rid of him. So yeah, we'll do uh, Oath of Kea. Get rid of Priest of Forgotten Gods. He might sacrifice it to prevent me from gaining life, but... Uh, it's worth it to make sure he can't sacrifice Woe Strider. That's fine. And uh, Oath of Kea will also gain us life after we start playing Planeswalkers and he starts attacking them. 
I'm hoping he plays Cauldron Familiar this turn. And, I mean, ideally any other small creatures. Timer Calls the Dead, that works. So we're going to be exiling, I think, four creatures this turn if he plays Cauldron Familiar. That's really good. Yeah. What? Why didn't you play that? There's no way he knows. Well, we have a spare, so maybe I should just do this now. Actually, I should wait until he has another zombie out. For now, we'll do Teferi, I guess. Actually, we'll do Atris. No, no, Atris will get killed by Cry of the Carnarium, so actually, yeah, I'll do Teferi. I'll bounce uh, Oath of Kea so I can get more life gain back. I really want that Cauldron Familiar to get caught by Cry the Carnarium. I don't know why he didn't play that. He had the mana for it. There's no way he knows that we have a Cry the Carnarium. Come on, play that Cauldron Familiar. You know you want to. There you go. Maybe he was waiting for me for him to have Witch's Oven? Oh, nice. Midnight Reaper. We're going to kill all of these. He's not going to get any cards because they're all going to be exiled. This is perfect. Yeah, this is happening for sure. And it doesn't matter what he sacrifices with Woe Strider because it kills things in the graveyard as well. Actually, he probably should have... He probably should have sacrificed those creatures to Scry. Because at the very least, he could have Scryed to see what he's getting next. But... Uh, Nice. That was pretty much best case scenario that we wiped out his entire army with Quiet the Carnarium there. Let's continue. So far, I feel like my wins have been pretty much luck. I don't know. I'm not convinced that uh, we're actually pulling off what the deck is supposed to do. Dorian 7. Good land situation. Thought erasure, duress. Damn, we actually are we actually are curving out here. We'll keep this for sure. The only issue is we one of these turns we're not gonna be able to play something because of our scry land. Unless we draw a basic land or a uh, a life land. But we'll keep this. Another Rakdos? So we might skip out on turn two, uh, because if we have Teferi out and we do Thought Erasure after Teferi's out, we can do Thought Erasure on his turn and get him right after he draws. So that might be the ideal way to do that. But we'll do a turn one Duress. Witch's Oven, goodbye. I bet he wishes he didn't do that Skryland turn one. Now his Witch's Oven gone. Uh, I probably want to make sure he I get rid of his Judith. Actually, I could bounce his Judith with Teferi. So yeah, we'll do a Scryland for now. Another Thought Erasure could be good. Hmm. You know what? I don't know. We already have one. And I think I want to make sure I, I get more, like, non-Scrylands to get closer to Nicol Bolas turn 5. Or an Oath of Kea, since we're against a primarily damage-dealing deck. I want some life gain. Does he have a basic land, or is he going to have to do that Fable Passage and just do Priest Forgotten Gods? Sounds like the latter. We'll probably bounce that with Teferi. Next turn, probably a Thought Erasure. He could kill Teferi with what he has, because he could do Priest of Forgotten Gods and then give it haste with Claim the Firstborn, but he'll basically be sacrificing a claim the firstborn to get to kill Teferi after I've already gotten the benefit out of him so I don't know if that'd be worth it for him there's Judith hmm 
We'll do Thought Erasure on his turn. Might be a bad idea. And since we're doing that, we could do a Scry Land. We'll do Temple of Silence. What do we have coming up? Narset. I don't know about Narset. Narset will help us find more stuff. But... Actually, next turn we're doing Nicol Bolas. So, yeah, we should do Narset, because we're going to have so many Planeswalkers out that it should distract from... Uh... It should make it difficult for him to focus on my life total. Although Teferi is probably dying this turn. We'll keep Narset. He'll put a break on his draw step. Let's see what he's got. Oh, God. Look at all these Priest of Forgotten Gods. We got a Midnight Reaper, Mayhem Devil, Judith. Wow. He's got a lot of stuff to play regardless of what we get rid of. But I think probably the most important thing to get rid of is Mayhem Devil. Yeah, we're going to get rid of Mayhem Devil. Man, he's got a lot of creatures to play. That's not really what I wanted to see. Because we can only get rid of so many per turn. Hopefully we can survive long enough to get Liliana out and then just make him sacrifice two creatures, but... I think Nicol Bolas is going to have to kill Judith. Oh, but he has a spare Judith, though. Hmm. Maybe I should do Narset first before Nicol Bolas. I need a Cry of the Carnarium, honestly. That's really what I need to find. And this Narset's not going to help me find that because it only finds... Oh, it will, actually. Non-creature, non-land. Yeah, so let's do Narset. We can do uh, Liliana next turn. Unless we find a crap. There it is, beautiful. Now he knows we have one, so he's probably not going to play any more creatures. But if he doesn't play any more creatures, then we can just do Liliana and make him sacrifice too. I think we're all set on lands. Let's look for more cards that we can use to get rid of his stuff. Yeah, he would be foolish to uh, play any more creatures knowing what we have. So he'll probably just kill Narset, maybe do two damage to my life total. I'll play Liliana, make him sacrifice both these guys. Liliana should die in the process as well, because Judith will do two damage to something. But I think uh, Liliana's fine to trade for these two. Actually, maybe I have this backwards. Maybe I should use Cry of the Carnarium to get rid of these two, and then use Liliana the following turn. We're going to do that, because that doesn't involve me paying life. And he's not going to play any more creatures until after we've done this. He was, he, he's just going to play one at a time. So yeah, he doesn't know that we have Liliana, so he'll probably play at least two creatures, and then we'll make him sacrifice both with Liliana. Hopefully he doesn't do Judith right away, never mind. <laughs> Called her familiar, nice, so he's going to lose those two. You know what? Maybe I should just make zombies instead of uh, instead of actually making him sacrifice those two. Because they are going to kill Liliana if they both die. But you know what? I think it's worth it. It's worth losing Liliana to get rid of these two before we lose too much life. Because we have two Nicol Boluses, we can handle the rest of his creatures. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Nicol Bolas can destroy Priest of Forgotten Gods. Although, I might actually just ignore Priest of Forgotten Gods and just... Uh, oh, never mind. He played Midnight Reaper. Well, I'm going to kill that with Nicol Bolas then. If it was just Priest of Forgotten Gods, I would just do Nicol Bolas' plus one every turn. But since it's Midnight Reaper, we'll kill this. So yeah, next turn we should be drawing a card every turn. Unless he gives something haste with... Uh... Oh, never mind, he's got Rankle. We're going to kill that with our other Nicol Bolas. Hmm, Atris. Should I maybe do Atris first? No, we need to kill Rankle. It's going to be an issue. Be 
So he can kill this Nicomolus if he plays like a Priest of Forgotten Gods or any other creature and gives it haste. Although, actually, I didn't realize I had enough mana for Atris as well, so we might be okay. What do we get? Teferi or these two cards? Hmm. I think I'm okay with Teferi. I am curious what those two are. I'm guessing they might be lands. Two lands, yeah. Made the right choice. We could even bounce Atris with Teferi and play him again for even more cards. We might do that. Might attack with him and then bounce him. Woe Strider, okay. Yeah, as long as we can keep Nicol Bolas alive for a bit, we're going to start pulling ahead of him. Oh, nice. He's giving it haste. I'll make that trade. Make that trade for sure. Oath of Kea. Beautiful. Let's see what we're drawing. Godless Shrine. I think I'm going to save Oath of Kea for when he plays a creature. For now, I'll just do Teferi and probably just give him plus one. Because uh, I want to save Teferi's minus three for when I play Oath of Chaos so I can gain life twice. We'll probably kill his Priest of Forgotten Gods once he plays it. Oh, he's escaping Woe Strider, actually. Hmm. Well, we can kill that with two Oath of Chaos. So that's fine. That'll work. I, won't let you win. I probably should have drawn a card first, just to see if I drew a better way of removing Woe Strider, but I've already started now. Oh, and our set. Yeah, this is looking really promising. I think we've got him. He's scrying. That's probably what I would do. And uh, he does have enough in the graveyard to escape it again, but I'd, I'd be fine with that. Oh, Liliana. We're doing that for sure next turn. Yeah, look at this board advantage we have. This is pretty much insurmountable at this point. Cry of the Carnarium. I think I want that. Him seeing this might be enough for him to concede, just knowing that I have a way of exiling any two toughness or less creature he plays. And I can do it on his turn as well, because I have to ferry. Yeah. Good game. That, I think, was a decent example of how the deck can do against other... In, like, a fair matchup. <laughs> that one, I'm willing to admit, probably wasn't as much luck as the first couple. Gotta say, though, I'm enjoying this deck. I always enjoy playing with decks that are really unusual, but also still viable. It's like my favorite thing to do. A uh, good land situation for our Planeswalkers, at least. We've got Teferi and Aconite Remorse for turns two and three. We'll keep it. On our red aggro again. Oh boy. I feel like whenever we're against aggro, not only are they, I mean, obviously they have an advantage in the early game because they're already super fast, but we always seem to go be, be going second against them, which is just like, it's unnecessary. It's even more of a disadvantage. We'll do Watery Grave, I guess. So yeah, Agonizing Remorse next turn. Oh, it's not even Mono Red. Hmm. So actually, if it's not Mono Red, it won't be as fast as possible as Mono Red could be. But it'll still be pretty fast. Let's find out what else we have in the hand. Oh, it's a knight's deck. Okay. Embercleave is scary. But if I get to ferry out, then he won't be able to do that. Claim Contender's not great, but he has two of them. So even if I get rid of one... Oh, man. This is bad. This is really bad. 
Teferi's not even going to survive. If I play him, I can bounce something, but he's just going to kill it with the other creatures. So maybe I should get rid of Embercleave to make sure he can't do that until he draws another one. Yeah. We're going to need to cry the Carnarium. He's got lots of little creatures. Oh god, other knights you control get plus one plus two. This is really bad. Uh, Interplanar Beacon, I guess, to, draw as to gain as much life as possible. The issue is we don't have anything to play until turn five after this. What do we bounce here? You show I'll show he can play Inspiring Veteran next turn, which is going to be a bunch of extra damage. So we should probably get rid of a Claim Contender so he can't do both. He can do one or the other. But he gets value every time he casts a Claim Contender. Uh, this thing doesn't have haste. If I bounce this, I'll prevent him creating another 1-1 one, one for free. But he'll still be able to cast it next turn. We'll get rid of uh, Sky Knight Vanguard. We need to cry out the Carnarium, like, next turn. Otherwise, I think we're dead. We're going to be able to take maybe maybe one or two more attacks before he kills us. Yeah, so here's Inspiring Veteran. Probably Sky Knight Vanguard again. Yeah. Cry of the Carnarium is pretty much mandatory for this upcoming draw step. We're dead. We can't even play anything. That's what happens. Yeah, I mean... Knowing what's in this deck, I'm guessing it's not really designed for best of one. With only two board wipes. It really just doesn't... It doesn't handle aggro at all in the main deck. It seems like it relies on uh, sideboarding for properly dealing with crowd control. Two cries two cries at the Carnarium is not really sufficient against what's primarily mono red aggro in the meta. Uh good land situation. We've got all these are early playables, we'll keep it. And I go first. That's kind of a nice plus. I just realized we don't have any black mana, so we can't even do agonizing as an agonizing remorse. That's unfortunate. Ideally, we'll draw one, but if not, we'll just do a Planeswalker on turn three. Finally, not Mono Red Aggro. Thank you. Temple of Silence. Okay, well, we can't do that this turn, but we'll have it for the future. Uh, I think we're okay on lands. I do. I might want this other black for things like Liliana or Cry of the Carnarium. Maybe I should take that. I'll take that and, and then probably not care about land after that. Growth Spiral. So looking like Ramp. Cynic Ramp. We'll probably do Narset to prevent him from drawing any more cards. Interplanar Beacon. Yeah. Narset should be pretty good against Ramp. Oath of Kea or Cry of the Carnarium. I don't think he's going to have a lot of two toughness or less creatures, so I'm going to go with both of Kea. Both to protect my Planeswalkers and to potentially deal some damage to something. Yeah, Narset should shut down any Growth Spirals or Uros that he might have, unless he just wants to use them for the mana ramp. But it should shut down the card draw. Yeah, the fact that there's a long pause here is uh, encouraging. It makes me think, like, he's thinking, damn, how do I deal with this in our set? That's exactly what I want. And then we'll do Teferi next turn. Keep him from doing any counters. Hopefully he taps out so that I can get Teferi out. Guaranteed. And then after that, it's just a waiting game until we find uh, Nicol Bolas or something. But yeah, I think this might be an okay matchup for us. We have plenty of time to develop our field. 
without being killed right out right out of the gate. Oh, is he wasting a timeout? Oh, he ran out of time. Interesting. We have a spare to ferry. Let's do this right away. There was no pause. Interesting. Does that mean he really doesn't have anything to play? There's Nicol Bolas. We're taking that. And uh, we'll do Teferi's plus one. Don't worry. Steam vents. It. Yeah, it's looking like Nicol Bolas is coming out next turn. He's out of timeouts, uh, and I haven't seen any activity in terms of highlighting. I wonder if his game crashed or if he's just uh, running out the clock out of spite. Either way, we'll take the win. That'd be pretty funny if he just, uh, upon seeing our set, he's just like, fuck this game. Hello? Yeah, I think he might, I think his game might have crashed or something. Well, no, usually you can tell at the very end if someone's just running out the clock out of spite because they'll say, like, good game at the very last second. But if there's just no activity with them highlighting cards, then it usually means their game crashed and they just didn't bother to reconnect. Yeah, all right. Nicol Bolas coming out. And then uh, Nicol Bolas telling him to sacrifice something should uh, cause him to forfeit automatically if he doesn't choose something in a timely manner. So let's find out. I'm guessing we have this by default. Even if he doesn't concede here, he's, he's dead. We have uh, three Planeswalkers in the field. He hasn't played a land. There's not much he can do. It's kind of unfortunate that magic can't detect when someone's actually connected to the game. I mean, I guess it's nice that you can reconnect if your game crashes, but part of me wishes that magic would just de detect if someone's no longer playing and then just make them forfeit right there on the spot instead of making you wait for their timeouts. That should be game. Yeah. Another lucky victory. I feel like, uh, what, what is that? One out of the four victories we've had so far have been actual, due to actually good playing. But that brings us to four wins, which covers the entry cost of the center event. Uh, we already have two losses, which means we're just now seeing how far we can go before we get our next loss. Uh, this hand's not gonna work. The land situation is okay, but we don't have any early playables, turns three or less. So we're going to mulligan this. We would just be outright killed if we were against mono-red aggro. Still nothing. The Elder Spell is not going to be a playable turn three or less. If we don't know there's any Planeswalkers, we have to mulligan again. Now we have Teferi's and Oath of Chaos, but only two lands. We'll keep this one, but it's really not ideal. We probably don't need this many Teferi's. Honestly, though, Nicol Bolas is going to be so far off with only two lands. I don't even know if we're going to get there, so we'll keep two Teferis just in case he removes one. This is a shitty start right off the bat. I think this is probably going to be our last uh, loss. Oh, Scryland, nice. I probably should take more land. But yeah, hopefully Oath of Kea can kill any creatures he plays, and then Teferi can bounce it back so we can do it again. What is this card art? That's pretty awesome. I like that one. Hushbringer. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. Thankfully, that doesn't apply to enchantments, because that would mean Oath of Kea can't kill this thing. So we are going to kill that with Oath of Kea. Let's do Watery Grave. This remi seeing Hushbringer always reminds me of this combo with uh, with Hushbringer and, what is it, Uro? Somebody did Hushbringer and Uro, and Hushbringer prevents Uro from automatically sacrificing. So you basically just play an Uro permanently for only three mana. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's do... 
Probably Oath of Chaos on a Johnny's Pride Mate, because that's going to get out of hand pretty soon. I'm fine with these little guys gaining him life, as long as he's not making anything bigger. Heliod, oh god, they're going to start buffing each other. Mmm! It's so annoying! And it's... Oath of Chaos is not going to be fast enough to get, get rid of these guys. I gotta do to Fairy. He's gonna die. Right on and he's just gonna make... You know what? I should be able to kill one of these. He's gonna be able to decide which one I kill based on which thing he gives uh, the counters to. But I can use Nickel Bolas to kill the other one if I draw another land. So we'll, we'll hope for that. To Fairy's definitely dead, but I have a spare now, thankfully. I'm just hoping he doesn't have a way of gaining one more life. If he gains two life this turn, that's fine. But if he gains one more life, he's going to be able to put both of those creatures at four toughness. And then I can't kill either one. Daxos. Oh no, that's another life! Oh, Hushbringer stopped it, thank goodness. Oh man, this is a disaster. Look at look how many creatures he has. And I'm off to such a slow start. It's really bad. We need, like, an Elspeth Conqueror's Death to get rid of this Heliod. He's probably going to buff Healer's Hawk to Toughness 4. Oh, God, look at all this. Yeah, so Oath of K, I can kill Healer's Hawk. And then, uh, after that, I think we're still dead. He's doing so much damage. Thankfully, Hushbringer prevented him from gaining any life with Daxos there. No, we need uh, crowd controllers. We need something to deal with what's on the board right now. Nickel Bolas should be a decent distraction for next turn and get rid of his pride mate, probably. And then we should gain some life if he attacks Nickel Bolas, but are we actually going to survive here? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we're dead. We're definitely dead. There's no card in the deck that will help us now. Cry of the Carnarium won't kill anything because of how, the, how big they are. Nickel Bolas can only get rid of one creature. Yeah, we're dead. What a disappointing end. Um, I guess there's always the off chance that he might attack Nickel Bolas, but even if he does, he could still kill me. He only needs one creature to attack Nickel Bolas. Yeah. I don't like being in the position of having to rely on the opponent's misplaying to actually survive, but that's where we are. He has to attack Nicol Bolas with Hushbringer, basically. And there's no reason for him to do that. Oh, he has Heliod now, so yeah, we're really dead. Yeah. I think the, uh, I think the third time proves it. This deck is definitely ill-prepared against aggro. This isn't even mono red aggro. And it was still ill-prepared. I just cannot handle crowd control. Yeah. He didn't even need to uh, ignore Nicol Bolas. He could kill everything he wanted. Good game. And I think that's our last loss. But you know what? We made it to four, which is better than I did when I was practicing offline. So I'm happy with that, at least. Let's claim our prize. Uncommons, 500 gold. We broke even, basically, in this event. All right, well, that's going to be this episode. Uh, I really enjoy mixing it up with that deck. Uh, not that deck in particular, but uh, decks in general that are different than what you usually see in the meta that can still, at times, compete with the meta. Um, that, deck, that deck definitely has a weakness to aggro. I think that's pretty clear based on uh, how I was playing there and how I was playing before recording. But uh, definitely fun to use. Definitely uh, a really enjoyable win condition, which is uh, Nicol Bolas... We actually didn't get to demonstrate the one-win condition where we use the Elder Spell to insta-kill the opponent with Nicol Bolas' ultimate. Uh, but I did do that once when I was offline. That was pretty fun. Uh, maybe if we play with this kind of deck again in the future, we'll go for that. But uh, yeah, definitely a nice mix-up with this deck. All right, that's going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.